Hello friends. In continuation with the discussion of different graphs under experimental physiology, today we are going to learn about how to make a nerve muscle preparation. For this experiment, the aim of our experiment is to become familiar with the procedure of isolation of sciatic nerve and gastrocnemius muscle of frog for various muscle grafts. So, various muscle grafts which we are going to elicit for that we require a nerve muscle preparation of gastrocnemius muscle. The apparatus and the things that we require for this experiment is a live frog, pitting needle, dissecting set which will be having a pair of scissors with blunt ends, scissors with sharp ends, a pair of pointed forceps and glass rods, thread and ringer solution for keeping the preparation moist. Now coming to the procedure, in the step one we have to do the stunning of the frog. This for the stunning of the frog we have to hold the frog by its hind limb and give it a single hard blow on its head against the edge of the table. The frog becomes unconscious. A single blow is much better than having a repeated blow. After we have stunned the frog, we need to do the pithing of the frog's brain to make it insensitive to pain. For that, we have to hold the frog as shown here. As you can see here, a frog, you have to hold it into your hand in such a way that your first finger is on the nose. The second finger is under the jaw and you are flexing the head of the a frog away from the body and you have to fix it you know you don't have to allow this frog to move you have to fix it in between your fingers already because of stunning it will be uh, immotile and you can still flex the head very easily then what you have to do is uh, you have to hold the probe or the pin whatever you are using to for the pitting and insert it into the cranium through the uh, you will find as you go here down, you will find a soft uh, point here. So, that soft point is indicating where you can insert the probe. This is actually first you have to uh, insert it through the occipito atlantic joint to severe the brain like upward and then you have to do it backward through the foramen magnum to severe the skulls to the spinal cord. If pithing is done very well, there will be no uh, corneal reflexes and no withdrawal reflexes. Now what it means that if the pitting is done well, there will be no brain eye reflexes, which means there will not be any corneal reflex, nor there will be any withdrawal reflex. So what is this corneal reflex? Corneal reflex is as when you bring any object close to the eye of the frog, uh, because of the corneal reflex, it will try to blink. Uh, the eyelids. But once if the pitting is done, even if you bring the object nearby, there will be no activity here. Then what is withdrawal reflex? Withdrawal reflex is when you stretch the limb of the frog, it will try to flex it. You know, as you see here, a withdrawal reflex is there. But this reflex is absent when we do the pitting very well. So the animal remains very flaccid and it will not show any kind of withdrawal reflex. Then in next procedure is that to, we have to remove the skin of the frog. There are two ways of doing it. You can make a section and peel off how it is shown here in the figure. The other is you can put the fit frog on the dissection board and cut the skin through around the middle of the trunk. So in the middle of the trunk, you make a section all through around it. Hold the trunk just below the forelimbs with a piece of cloth and you grip the skin over the lower uh, half of the trunk with another piece of cloth and strip the skin of the legs. Now how to isolate the sciatic nerve? For a nerve muscle preparation we require a sciatic nerve and the muscle that we require is the gastronymus muscle. As you can see here this is the gastronymus muscle which is attached by the tendon here the achilles tendon and the sciatic nerve is passing through here and we can see here so we can see that the spinal nerve 7, 8, 9 they are coming here it's they are forming the sciatic nerve here. So how do we do that? Our frog has been pitted. We have removed the skin. And the next thing that we have to do is that introduce one blade of scissor through the cloaca and cut through the muscle. Cloaca is this anal areas. You have to cut through the muscle close to the inner border of the ileum on either of the sides. Next, you have to lift this urostyle 
and the muscles attached to it and continue to cut on either side of the distal half of the vertebral column so we reach up to here after reaching there we have to make a transaction across the vertebral column using a bone cutter next we cut away the urostyle and the attached muscles and we detach the blood vessels between the sciatic plexus and the nerves in the abdomen and dissect the piece of column in two so what we do here is that as you have seen the vertebral column the vertebral column is dissected into two parts so we have two anterior horn cells attached to the uh, attached to this vertebral uh, column next is isolation of the sciatic nerve so sciatic nerve is the nerve which is supplying my gastrocnemius muscle as shown in the figure and how can we know it it's just beneath the skin very close to the thigh we can see here and there are certain blood vessels which are attached to it so we lay the frog on its abdomen penetrate the overlying muscle fascia and we separate the thigh muscles by using blunt dissection scissors we free the nerve and separate the next nearby uh, blood vessels and we use the glass rod to isolate although shown in the picture is a forcep this is not to be used rather we should use a glass rod we should not use the metal because metal may excite the sciatic nerve and after we have uh, separated the sciatic nerve or while we are doing this side section we have to take care that we keep pouring the ringer solution to keep the whole preparation moist next is we free the gastrocnemius so uh, we have identified the sciatic nerve we have uh, cut the vertebral column we have taken the you know vertebral column uh, a piece of a bone of that and we have divided into two parts one half for left side and other half for the right side now what we need to do is and isolate the gastrocnemius muscle for this we have to free the gastrocnemius muscle from the tibia by passing the forcep between them and free about half an inch of the tendon which is here the achilles tendon and tie a thread under the tendon now we cut the tendon below the ligature and now this thread is the one which we are going to uh, tie it onto the liver and keep our muscles taut so we'll cut away the tibia we'll cut away the tibia and uh, fibula and the muscles on either side of lower half of the femur we cut the femur half an inch above the joint and we keep some part of the uh, bone there so that we can attach that into the femur clamp so this is how the now uh, muscle preparation will look like a vertebral column with the sciatic nerve and the gastrocnemius muscle now the ringer solution which we were talking about uh, what is its composition so ringer solution is composed of 0.6% sodium chloride which is isotonic to the frog's plasma 0.14% uh, potassium chloride which helps to maintain the resting membrane potential of this uh, uh, preparation 0.12% of calcium chloride which will help to maintain the muscle excitability and stimulate the atpase activity 0.02% sodium bicarbonate which provides the optimum ph now there are certain questions which we we might be asked during the viva or otherwise when there is uh, no discussion about the nerve muscle preparation the first question is why the frog is stunned and not anesthetized the answer to this is that the anesthetics used may have effect on to the nerve or the neuromuscular junction or maybe that you know it may directly affect my muscles so therefore the frog is not anesthetized rather it is stunned and pitted why is the head ventroflexed during pitting the head is ventroflexed in order to locate the triangular depression as i was telling it when we want to pit we have to first find out that triangular depression which marks the junction between the skull and the vertebral column where pitting needle has to be inserted how do you know that the frog has been effectively pitted how is that we will know it a properly fitted frog will not have any corneal reflexes neither will feel any pain nor it will give any withdrawal reflexes it will completely it will exhibit a complete flaccidity of the limbs and this is how we make it out that okay the frog has been very properly pitted now the next is what is the advantage i told you know the vertebral column a piece of vertebral column is kept 
we uh, make a section with the bone cutter you know two of the vertebras above and one of two of the vertebras below and then we make a middle section of it so that we can have a right and left separation so what is the advantage of retaining such a big uh, you know piece of vertebral column the advantages are that during dissection it will be easier for us to hold uh, the nerve uh, without touching the nerve we can you know move the nerve at different places we can put it onto the frog board and we need not touch the nerve at all we can make you know it gives us the maximum length of the nerve can be obtained and when kept across the electrodes the nerve does not slip between because of the weight of the bone so if nerve is cut slightly uh, uh, stimuli can stimulate the injured surfaces and cause the muscle to contract irregular so if we cut the nerve from the vertebral column we may irritate this nerve so it may have uh, you know slight amount of activity all the time happening which may lead our uh, muscles to contract next is what is the advantage of keeping the knee joint intact so the advantage of keeping the knee joint intact is that it will help us to fix it to the board along with the muscle and nerve and the nerve may get uh, cut into pieces if we try to cut the knee joint so we can clamp uh, this knee joint into the femur clamp and keep the things intact thank you that's all